What's up, everyone? This is Thomas with Keller Williams here in St. Augustine, and today we're doing a live stream just for you guys. So, any questions you might have, anything I might be able to answer, go ahead and leave them in the comments below, and I'll get right back to you. We are also going to cover the market stats today and also the rele relevant news stories that I'm seeing over the past couple of weeks. So, you get an update on some of the things that we've been talking about. Um, so, first question is, uh, where are you guys from? If you're tuning in from a different area other than St. Augustine, go ahead and leave it in the comments. I'd love to be able to know where you're from. So go ahead and, and put that below. Um, so I'll get started here shortly. Um, but first, just let me know where are you tuning in from? Um, you know, are you from New York? Are you from Pennsylvania, California? Or are you living maybe in South Florida? I'd love to be able to know, get an idea of where uh, our viewers are at. Um, but let's just hop right into it. We're going to go right into the market stats for the year to date. So we're going to look from the very beginning of the year to uh, the end of February, because that's the most recent stats that we have, at least the full month. Um, so we're going to go ahead and dive right into that. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Okay, and we'll go to this one right here. So this is the first thing. This is the Northeastern Florida Association Realtors Real MLS stats market snapshot. So it's given us um, pretty much the whole past year, uh, actually all the way back to 2019 of January, give you units sold per month. So uh, right now we're right over here. Um, this is February data over here. And typically, you know, January, February are going to be these slower months for real estate just because people are getting over that high of the, you know, the, the holidays and the new year and everything and just trying to get back into the schedule, the swing of things. Uh, and you can see that's pretty cyclical here. January 2021, we're at the lowest points of units sold per month. And then also January 2020, our lowest point of units sold per month. So uh, we're looking at St. John's County here. We're going to switch it over to price. So you can see here that the median sold price per month uh, has gone up pretty significantly. It's been 20% year over year. So as of right now, our median sold price per month is $480,000 for the month of February. Compare that to February of last year, we're at $397,000. So that is almost you know, $100,000 uh, increase from this time last year. And of course, you know I've talked about it in my other um, videos about the demand that's coming here because of the large market of people retiring here, as well as the low interest rates, people trying to hop in on those. So that's where we're seeing these increases here. We don't have any homes on the market. And uh, we'll look over here at the new listings by month. Um, and typically when we're going into the spring, summer months, that's when we're going to see the most active listings. And you can kind of see it kind of hops around here. But this is December of 20, uh, 2019, goes up into January, and this is March. And you can see here, things kind of died off really hard during COVID. So March 2020 goes right down, um, you know, because of that, no one knew what was going on. There was kind of a lull there, and then it starts picking up again. Um, so new listings by month, we have 522 on the market right now. Um, which is not that many homes comparatively to what it was. I'll show you on the inventory here what it was several years ago. Days on market. So days on market, these are for single family condominiums and townhomes. So each line re uh, respectively is different. This is the purple line is townhome, blue line is single family, and the condominium is uh, that darker purple. So 19 days, we got 16 days for single family and 21 days for townhomes. So less than a month's um, supply of inventory. Uh, so that means that pretty much everything on average is selling within a month's time, which is compared to a market several years ago, which is what most people are used to, the average days on market was 90 to 100 days. So that's a really fast turnover. And this is what we're talking about when we're talking about the inventory here. So this is just in St. John's County. NEFAR co covers a huge Northeastern Florida Association of Realtors, so the Northeast of Florida. Um, so. This is showing here active inventory by month. So we're down here at 513 for February of 2022. Um, and if you're comparing that to February of 2019, that was 2,122. So we really do have an inventory problem here. We have a large demand uh, that we cannot seem to satiate, which is evident if you're looking at the data here. So super important. 
Um, I'm going to hop back here real quick. I'm going to go to the solo layout. Okay, so I'm back here and let's see, I got a comment where we at, Hampton, Virginia. Okay, very nice, very nice. I like that, I'm gonna give you a star. Tuning in from Hampton, are you thinking about moving here? Are you thinking maybe, uh, you know, just vacation down here, trying to get an idea of what's going on? Uh, I'd love to be able to know, leave me in the comments. Um, so we'll go into, let's see here. The next thing we have is going to be the important news in the area. So every two weeks I cover the important relevant news in the area. Uh, this week I'm gonna be focusing on St. Augustine and the development in the area and other things that have gone over in Florida in general, because I think it's super important to touch on if you're considering relocating here. Um, but the first news story I'm gonna to go to, I'll switch over here and share my screen again. Let's see here. All right, and boom. New census data shows that St. John's County is growing the fastest in Florida. It says that we're growing uh, with more than 15,000 15, new residents a year. Uh, the county grew from 5.62% from July 2020 to July 2021, reaching almost 300,000 residents. Um, now, if you're comparing that with our neighboring counties, uh, Duval County only grew 0.36%, which we're, they're still under a million there, um, which I don't know if that's totally accurate. Um, but then you can see Clay County, Baker County, Putnam County, they're only growing less than 2%. You have 1.63, 1.43, and 1.112 growth. So St. John's County is growing three to four times faster than these other counties here. And we're going to dive more into that and how that's affecting our area here uh, locally with schools. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I know that's important for a lot of people. Um, so we'll go to the next one here. Uh, the next article is Encompass Health Rehabilitation Hospital of St. Augustine now open. If you are a fan of mine, you probably watched some of the videos that I've done in the past where I said Route 207 is becoming the hottest spot for development. It was actually a news article I covered, but that's because all over on 207, they're building left and right. And I think they have now five hospitals on 207 alone, and they just reopened Encompass or they just opened Encompass Health Rehabilitation Center, uh, where it's going to be a 40 bed re rehabilitation hospital, and it's going to have private patient rooms, a large therapy room with advanced rehabilitation technologies and activities of daily living suite, a therapy courtyard, a cafeteria and a day room. So I know here with University of St. Augustine, they have a large physical therapy program. So I imagine they'll probably be partnering and anyone graduating there will be heading over there and vice versa. So it'll probably be a great partnership for the area. Um, on top of that, we just have more hospitals coming to the area, which are serving the growing population. So that's really great. All right, let me hop back here. I don't have any other questions, guys. If you do have any questions, go ahead ahead and leave them in the comments below. This time is for you. So I'm, I'm here to answer any questions that you guys have. I just cover in this other stuff just to put out some more information here. Uh, so we'll hop over to this other one here. I've talked about this in my other live streams where this is going to be St. Augustine study building over 500 units for workforce housing. Now that was something that we talked about on Fish Island Road, which is in St. Augustine Beach, Anastasia Island. Um, and the article I covered was actually people trying to fight against against it so that they wouldn't build work, more workforce housing on the island. Um, kind of like a, there's not enough space on the island, you know, there's already traffic's already bad enough, kind of not my backyard situation. They want the workforce housing to be off of the island, which I don't necessarily agree with. You know, I think you need to make housing for everyone everywhere, you know, all types. So I wanted to pull up here on the screen. I have uh, the areas that they're planning um, to do some work. So. Right here, you can see 800 Island Drive South and then 865 Fish Island Road. Those are both of the sites the, the county owns that they're talking about making into affordable housing. Now, now, those look like ideal spots. They're right on 312. You know, you have quick access to, you know, the beaches. You have quick access to downtown. Um, hospitals all right there. I don't see why affordable housing couldn't go in there. I don't think traffic is that bad that an additional 500 units would make that big of a deal. But... Who am I? I'm not the city planner. This is the other location. So this is also not a bad location. This is off of Holmes, um, which is the connector really between Route 16 and Route 207. So Route 16 is right here. 
and Route 207 is right here. So 207 is where all this the development's going. This is where that rehabilitation center is going right over here. Um, and this is where they're talking about potentially putting the affordable housing. So that's not a bad location either. If you're talking about servicing the downtown, you go right through King Street, you'll be in downtown St. Augustine in five minutes. You know, if you need to go to either the Publix up on 16, or if you need to go to US 1 for some reason, it's a pretty close drive. I mean, you're probably three minutes to 207 and 312. So that's not a bad location for it, but I don't really like that residents of St. Augustine that are on the island are fighting against affordable housing because affordable housing is not available in bunches on the island. So I really think that, you know, that needs to be revisited, but I wanted to give you guys an overview of where they're talking about for the affordable housing. Let's take a look here, see if I got any comments. Okay, I got a comment here, beautiful. Doing a lot of research, hoping to relocate one of these fine days. I'm just not sure where or when. I hear you. And the amazing thing is, is that YouTube has become such a um, wonderful place to look up these things. I mean, I, I think about when my mom moved down here in 98, you know, she was a single mom moving with two kids. They didn't have GPS or MapQuest or anything like that. It was literally just like take 95 down. You see a sign that says St. Augustine and figure, you know, you got to read a physical map. Like I, to me, it just blows me away. I just, I, I can't even think that at one point, um, you know, people use actual physical maps, whereas now I Google everything. Anytime I know where I'm going in the city and I still Google it because I want to find the fastest route available to avoid any traffic. So I'm, I'm lost without it, you know, like, and luckily I know where I'm going here, but I mean, I, the, the nose on like some of the people, but you know, they don't make them like they used to because just driving, Oh, you know what? I'm going to drive to Florida and live my life down there without knowing anything about the area or the people or what's available. It's amazing. But um, hope I, if you need any more information of nature, go ahead and reach out directly. I'll be able to help uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, if there's any questions that I haven't answered, please go ahead, feel free, leave them below because I guarantee that there's other people thinking exactly what you're thinking and they just need that question answered. So feel free. All right, we'll head back. We'll go right on to the next news story. Okay, so let's see. Ooh. All right. So this is something that has been all over the news, controversial, don't say gay bill, signed into law, Florida Republicans say it's the year of the parent. And I really wanted to understand what was going on here because it's on fire in social media. Um, and from what I can find out is that it doesn't say anything about not saying gay or it just says that we shouldn't talk about sexual orientation or sex at all up until the fourth grade. Um, so it's uh, from what I can tell, it's being blown out of proportion, uh, but I could be 100% wrong. If I am, please let me know in the comments and educate me on what I'm wrong about. Um, but it's just really interesting because um, I looked it up, I think, let's see here. Yeah, I looked it up here. So the, the bill is actually called the Parental Rights and Education Bill. So I, I, I don't know why we need the bill in the first place. Uh, I, I'm not sure what were, were the sparks to that fire. Um, but I know it's big in social media right now and Florida is getting a lot of flack, but I don't think it has anything to do with um, not saying gay, just, just from what I'm reading online and what I researched, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I just figured that's an important conversation to talk about if you are considering loca uh, locating here. This is another important article here. We talk about flooding in St. Johns County and St. Augustine all the time. St. Augustine receives more than 26.5 million for flooding, other resilience projects. So. That's really great. This is downtown St. Augustine here at Cordova and Bridge Street. Um, and this happens like it, it'll pull up like this when, you know, a, a good hour long sunstorm comes and it, it, it'll pull up really, really quick. It's, it's pretty amazing. Uh, but I wanted to show what they're going to be doing here. Um, so Lake Maria Sanchez flood mitigation and drainage improvements. Uh, so that's in Lincolnville and we'll pull up the map here. So that's actually right over here. So they're definitely having some flooding in that area. The only high spot is right along here on MLK. I think that's only the only area that's flood zone X within Lincolnville. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of houses that line right here. So they probably just need a better stormwater management system in the area. Um, boop, 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 where are we at? Here we go. And then this one as well is really important. Um, South Whitney and West King Street flood mitigation and drainage improvements. So 
Um, I'm going to cover this as well, but South Whitney and West King. So West King is right over here. And this is a major win for the area because this, this area has been neglected for a long time. And the fact that they're going to be putting in some stormwater drainage management in this area is going to, I think, help the area a lot. On top of that, um, over here on West King Street, they are talking about adding a, I think, a 50-person hospital here in the future, which is supposed to be completed by 2023. So big news for this little area here. Um, and let's go here. So we'll skip over that. Uh, you can see that there's a whole bunch of other things. South Davis Shores are trying to um, do some flood mitigation and drainage improvements. That's also a, a high flood area too. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll move on to the next one. This is a little simpler one. I've covered this before. Uh, elite Airways, they were doing between St. Augustine, so St. Augustine Regional, Northeastern Florida Regional Airport. They're running commercial flights from St. Augustine to Newark, New Jersey, twice a week, starting at $129 each way. They've also added to that, so they're adding another commercial flight to Portland, Maine, and St. Augustine. So if you want to go back to Portland, Maine, I hear it's a really, really cute city. You're able to now do that out of the St. Augustine Regional Airport, which is really, really great. I mean, I have a whole bunch of family in New York, so the Newark one is perfect for me. Um, but this, you know, this opens up some, maybe a you know, nice weekend, a little date weekend with my fiance. So, okay. Um, so population boom in Northwest St. Johns County leads to proposed school zoning. So I've mentioned this before in my previous videos, our, our county is growing. I just covered it, it's growing 5.6% year over year. Uh, so we're, we're getting that 300,000 mark. And we're we're going to push over that, I imagine, this past year. So with that, you have more schools coming there. You have more hospitals coming into the area. But people specifically move because they want to be in the best school zone for their kids. So how do you guarantee that with what's going on in our county? As of right now, and this is what this article talks about, is they can't really guarantee that, you know, because they have to change it so much with our growing population. They're building four schools over the next five years here in St. John's County. They're finishing one up here in Shearwater, which is a sprawling community, um, very similar to Nocatee, um, where essentially all the kids that live in Shearwater would go to the school. Um, but they have to figure it out because it has to fit with the rest of the area and how these kids have already gone to school. And they're still trying to figure it out. So these things change. You move into one school zone, the next year it could be different because of the development going on here in the area. All right, let me hop back here, see if I have any comments. Do, do, do. Okay, let's see. Show here. Oh, sorry. Solo layout. I'm still getting the hang of this live stream stuff, guys. So please give me a, um, you know, little bit of forgiveness. Thanks for the opportunity to allow us to ask questions. Based on your experience, how long does a house stay on the market before it's being sold? House in St. John's County with great schools, eight plus. Um, yeah, so days on market right now uh, for pretty much everything's under 21 days. So that's in the entire, you're talking single family home. I think single family was 18, 19. I can flip back here um, just to take a quick look. Uh, days on market, do, do, do. Single family homes with 17 days on market. So homes are going quick across the entire county. So if it's in the best school district, it's the best house in the best community, you can guarantee that home is gonna go into multiple offer situations within the first couple of days. And that's why you see homes go on the market, homes go right off the market. It's because the, and
exactly sure what happened here. Hey, sorry about that. I don't know what happened here. I hope I'm still on the live stream. Uh, looks like my laptop kind of just turned off. I don't know what happened. Yeah. So yeah, if you're looking for a home in the best market with the uh, best school district and you have, you know, the home is beautiful, immaculate, it's going to sell within a week. It's going to go to highest and best uh, multiple offers within a couple of days, unlikely. And this is why it's super important to work with a local agent who knows what's going on in this market. Because if you're working with someone who does this part time or isn't aware like how fast everything is moving here, then you're honestly going to be SOL because when it comes down to getting into the home, you need to get in the house, like the nicest houses within the first couple of days or you got no shot. So it's super important. I know that seems like a simple thing, but some agents just are not on the ball. So great question. Thank you so much for it. Um, but any other questions, go ahead. Feel free to reach out directly. Shoot me a text, call DM, whatever that is. All right. We'll go on to the next thing here, guys. Let me take this off. And we're going to hide. We're going to do this. Share my screen. All right. We're back at it. All right. So, Elite Airways, where we go, where we go, where we go. This is super important. I just talked about this. West Augustine Medical Center project to get $5 million in federal aid. Now, St. John's County is supposed to be getting a whole bunch of money here um, over the next year. But they're looking to move forward on the engineering portion of the project. And the funding just gave us a green light to go full throttle. Now, this area here is being like, I mean, it, it's just changing. They've started doing um, the Night of Lights. They This past year, they just started continuing it out over here. They have a couple cool, like they have the Bog Brewery right over here, A1A Crab House. A couple of food trucks open around uh, West King too, which is relatively new. Um, they have a tattoo shop over here. They also have right behind the Bog Brewing Company. Here's a really good tip for you guys. Right behind the Bog Brewing Company, they have Tacos My Blessing. Authentic Mexican tacos. Oh my gosh, chef's kiss. Boom, so good. Oh my gosh. But either way. Putting a hospital here would be great. So 207 is right over here where they're adding five or six hospitals. But right over here, they have this whole community that is really underserved in terms of hospitals. The closest one is going to be Flagler Hospital, which is probably 15 minutes south of where this location is on 955 West King Street. So this would be a great area for a hospital. On top of that, I know DR Horton is talking about building, they already have it out here, Morgan's Cove out on 214. Um, and that's going to be a larger community, too, that's going to be served by there and also the two out of seven hospitals. So that's really important. OK, let's hop on to our ne next one here. Real estate gone wild. Now, this is something I've covered on my Instagram stories. If uh, you are looking to you know, stay up to date on everything I'm doing, go ahead and follow me at Redbeard, uh, Re Redbeard Northeastern Florida Realtor. So Redbeard NEFL um, Realtor. Uh, real estate gone wild, humble homes selling for huge sums in St. Augustine. So this was something that I covered, and this is a home. It's on uh, downtown St. Augustine uh, for three hundred thousand, and there's another one for three hundred fifty thousand. Let me see here. They have it here. No, they don't. Okay, so there's two essentially that made news for being so expensive, and you know how how can someone afford to pay for this when it literally needs a hundred percent full remodel? Now. That really comes out and you got to think like, okay, so it's in downtown St. Augustine, you know, the zoning of the property. Um, I looked it up. I think it is actually RS2, which if it's an RS2 zoning, you're only allowed to rent it out one, uh, four, one week minimum. So if you have, you know, you have four weeks in a month, you can rent it out for two days during that one week. You can only rent it out one time during that one week. So it can be for seven days, it could be for two days, it could be for three days, but you couldn't have like two, two day stays within a week only one stay per week. So if you're looking at location, you can see that was listed at $300,000, $350,000. If you buy that property, you put $100,000 in, in, into it, renovating it completely, and you make an income of $40,000 to $45,000 a year, you're making a 10% return on your investment. So when you see going for that kind of money, there is an investment aspect involved. There's other money at play. It's not just basing it off of the comparable, oh, this house around the corner sold for this. Well, that house around the corner could be in a different zoning. It could you know, be a, a family member living there, whereas this could be bought for investment and you could flip it. And then the return on your income is really the guiding 
of the, the property value. If you know you can make $70,000 a year, that property just became a $700,000 property. As of course, when you remodel it and everything, but that's the biggest driving factor here is how much money you can make. And that's where St. Augustine is changing now because there weren't a whole bunch of investors bidding on homes like this. You know, before it kind of went along with the residential sales market, it wasn't as much of what's the return on an income. You know, it was more of like, oh, you know, I live here, I could buy this duplex and rent it out, make some money. Now we have investors in the game, at least more serious investors who are looking for that cap rate, that return on investment. So that's why you're seeing things like that. Okay, let's see here. Guys, uh, once again, if you have any questions, leave them below. I see we got a couple people on here. Um, thank you so much for watching, by the way. Um, any additional questions, I'm here for you. So go ahead and leave them below and uh, we'll, you know, I'll go ahead and get answering them. So let's see here. Oh, look, love nature. That's what I'm talking about. She subscribed. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's what you gotta do. Any other information guys, you know, like the, no question is a dumb question. If you're considering moving to the area, you know, it, I, I consider myself a little bit of an expert, you know, I do this as a job. So any questions you have, I can, I can help out with. Let me take this banner down. You guys didn't tell me about this banner. Come on. I couldn't have had important news up there for this whole time. Wow. Well, guys, you got nothing coming to me. I, I don't know. So, uh, I, I'll leave it here at that. I appreciate your time today. If you get a little bit of value, a little bit of knowledge out of this live stream, do me that solid. Tap that subscribe button below, like the video, comment with any additional questions. If you need any further assistance, I'm here to help. Reach out directly. Call, text, email. I'm here for you.